Hey everyone and welcome back to another 3D Revolution. In the last episode in my series of 3D printing and the environment, I pitched two biodegradable filaments against a Recycle PLA and a Virgin PLA to see how they each performed. However, even if you're intentionally printing with a material that isn't going to still be around in a thousand years time, you still want your prints to last. So in this video, I'm going to be pitching those same four filaments against each other again, this time testing their durability in harsh conditions over a month. It was interesting to see how the filaments performed in the various tests of my last video, so make sure you check that out. In this video, I'm going to be testing the strength and durability of these filaments over time. I'm also going to be looking at bridging and thin extrusion, which I didn't fully look at in the last video. So I'll be looking at that straight off the print bed, but then also how the thin extrusions hold up over time. This video is part of a series that I'm doing on 3D printing and the environment. And here I'm looking to see if biodegradable filament, as well as recycled PLA, can perform just as well as virgin PLA. The virgin PLA that I'm using here is the new refill PLA option by Prusa. The recycled PLA option I'm using is the RPLA by Filamentive. The first of the biodegradable filaments I'm using is the Alga by 3D Print Life. And then the other biodegradable filament I'm using is Non-Oilin by Filamentum. If you want to know more about any of these filaments, make sure you check out my previous videos in this series, where I've looked into each of them in a lot more detail, talking about their advantages, their disadvantages, and running more tests on them. For this durability test, I've modified a version of the Carabiner design by The Printer. I'll pop a link in the description below to his model, but it's basically a super strong, high quality carabiner. I printed a number of these in the past and I used them on shoots all around the world. They're really good. I highly recommend them. Not only is it a super strong hook that will allow us to test the strength of these filaments, but it's also going to demonstrate which of these filaments is suitable for semi-rigid functional movement. My modified version of it is slightly simplified in some ways, but it does have some extra features. There is a 25 mm wide extrusion, which will be used in part of the strength testing that I'll go over later. And then there is a extrusion panel at the end of that with one millimeter thick, 24 millimeter long bridges extruding over to that panel. Now the plan is to test how each of these features hold up over a month. So I'm gonna be printing two of these models in each filament. One set is going to be hung inside a sunny window with a weight hanging from it. And the other set will be left hanging outside in the pouring rain and icy temperatures. So let's get them printed, and before I get them hung up for their month of torture, we'll have a look and see how each of them is performed with the bridging. Okay, so with them all printed, let's have a look and see how the spring-loaded mechanism performs, and how the bridging has turned out. First up is the Virgin PLA, and the bridging has come out perfectly. The actual bridges look almost like they were just printed directly on the bed, and there is absolutely no issues with them whatsoever, so at the moment, without having its month of torch test, that looks great. The spring, if you're not familiar with this model, this body is printed separately to the door, and then this just hooks into a hole here and becomes an automatic spring mechanism on the door there. Comes as no surprise that as this model was recommended to be printed in PLA or PETG, that that door worked perfectly. Next up, and as expected, the RPLA, the recycled PLA has performed just as well as the virgin PLA. So the bridging is absolutely perfect there. No problems whatsoever, looks nice and clean. And then the spring loaded door has the perfect amount of resistance and spring. Now let's take a look at the Alga filament by 3D Print Life. So the bridging is almost perfect. Uh, on this front here, this bridge here has the tiniest bit of sag. It's maybe point, huh, I mean, like maybe 0.1 millimeters. It's a tiny bit of sag across the board, but on the whole, the bridging there looks perfect. If you look at the other side, the bridge here actually has no sag. So it's obviously not going to be a constant issue and it certainly isn't a significant issue, but there is the tiniest, tiniest bit of sag there. Um, with the spring mechanism, it works just as well as both of the PLA ones. It's got a nice solid lock there, 
um, you can't accidentally like knock that open, but it will bend in without breaking, without cracking, so you can lock this on something. That's perfect. And last up is the non-oilin, which is the second of the biodegradable filaments. The bridging again is great and I can't see any sag there at all on either side so that's performed really well. And then with the door, the mechanism, the spring works absolutely great. There's a tiny bit of stick at the top here but I think that's probably just because there's a bit of cleanup that needs to happen but on the whole that works great. So now we know how they are to start with, let's hang them out and we'll come back to them in a month to see how they're doing. One set is then hung from a frame which I built and placed on a sunny windowsill inside the house and then each of them has a weight of 1.25 kilograms hung from them. The other set is hung up outside completely exposed to the elements for a month over December and January. They don't have weights hung from these ones but they do have to put up with the cold and the wet. Well, it's been a month since these prints were put out to pasture, and since then it's been pouring with rain, freezing cold, it's even snowed a bit, so let's see how they've held up. We'll start with the indoor prints to begin with, just because they should be in a slightly better state at least, and we'll begin by taking a look at the bridging. So we'll start out with the Virgin PLA, and I mean, it, it looks like it's just come off the print bed, it doesn't look like anything's changed. It's kind of what you'd expect, your PLA prints don't usually degrade over a month, so I wouldn't expect it to look any differently, but as a benchmark, this is really good to see. One thing that might affect it when it comes to the strength test in a little bit is that all of these indoor prints have had 1.25 kilo weight. It's about two and a half pounds hanging from each of them that entire month. So we'll see if that affects their strength at all, as well as the, uh, the general month that's passed. Uh, but it looks like it's just come off the print bed. So let's move on to the next one. Next up is the Recycled PLA by Filamentive and again we're looking at the bridging at this point and the bridging seems again just like it's come off the print bed, it doesn't look any different to how it did a month ago so really impressed with that so far. Next up is the Alga, one of our biodegradable filaments and the bridging um, we noted when it first came off the print bed that the front bridging here had a little bit of sag, uh, that's become slightly more pronounced and almost went into an S shape. Um, but the bridging at the back here hasn't been hugely affected at all. It still looks pretty much like it's just come off the print bed. So that's looking pretty good right now. And last up for the indoor bridging is the non oilin by Filamentum. Um, the bridging when this came off the bed was pretty much perfect and it looks like it's pretty much the same again. There's no real change on either side of the bridging there. So that's held up pretty well over the month's time. Well, that's how the bridging fed indoors. Next up, we're going to be looking how the strength held up for these prints. We're going to be doing a similar thing to what I did in my previous video, where I'll be clamping them to the corner of my desk and adding an increasing amount of weight to them to see at what point they break. The reason I'm going to be adding weight like this rather than hanging it underneath is, well, firstly, it's designed to have weight hung underneath like this. And as a result, this model has incredibly strong tensile strength in that direction but the other reason is that by adding weight in this direction not only is it testing the strength of the filament it's also testing the strength of the bond between the layers so let's see how each of them fares up under pressure we'll start out hanging 1.25 kilograms from each one we're now up to 2.5 kilograms and they're all still holding in there we're now up to 3.75 kilograms, and oh, not oil and, and virgin PLA have both broken at 3.75. We're now up to 5 kilograms, and oh, alga has broken, meaning that recycled PLA has lasted the longest. 6.25 kilograms, 7.5 kilograms. Oh, and it's gone. Well, that was very surprising to see, with the virgin PLA tying with non oil and, and breaking first at 3.75 kilograms, where the recycled PLA lasted all the way to 7.5 kilograms, which is double that of the virgin PLA and non oilin Meanwhile, Alga lasted out until 5 kilograms, beating both of the non oilin and the virgin PLA. Now let's do the same with the ones that have spent the last month outdoors. As with before, we'll start by looking at the bridging, but because these have been out in the elements, we'll also look to see if that has affected the spring mechanism. So first up is our benchmark, the Virgin PLA, and like with the ones that have spent the last month indoors and also the one that was straight off the print bed, the bridging looks 
untouched. It looks like it's just come off the print bed, to be honest. Um, I have no problems with that. Now let's have a look at how the spring mechanism has worked after a month in the rain and the snow. Same again there. There's absolutely no problem. I can open it. It's not, I can't hear any cracking sound. It's springing back as it should be. It's still locking into place. So that is as it should be. So next up is the recycled PLA by Filamentive. And with the bridging, as with the Virgin PLA one, it looks pretty much untouched. It looks like it may not be as perfectly straight as before, but less than 0.01 millimeter difference. I would say that looks like it could have come straight off a print bed, to be honest. And the door mechanism springs back fine. It's getting a bit caught as it closes up here, but I think that's just because the positioning has shifted slightly rather than any damage to the print. There we go, it's working fine now. Next up is the first of our biodegradable filaments. It's Algo by 3D Print Life. And the bridging on this has held up really well. The uh, the sag that we saw when it was off the print bed was the one that I ended up using indoors. And this one doesn't have any sag even after a month outdoors. So evidently that was just a problem that occurred on uh, the print bed rather than during its time in the elements. And with the door mechanism, that's springing back really nicely. Absolutely no problem there at all. Finally, we've got the non oilen by Filamentum. And the bridging on this one is absolutely spot on. I've got no problems with that whatsoever. And the door mechanism, again, is clipping back in perfectly. That is really nice to see. Right, now for the big finale. Let's see how the strength held up for these parts after hanging outside in the pouring rain and sub-zero temperatures for a month. Starting out with the 1.25 kilograms, up to 2.5 kilograms, and they're still holding out. Now up to 3.75 kilograms. Oh, and Alga has broken first under 3.75. We're now up to 5 kilograms, and non oilin has also broken under 5 kilograms. 6.25 and Recycled PLA and Virgin PLA have both broken. We see them in a very different order this time. The Recycled PLA still coming in joint first, but both PLAs lasting to the highest level of 6.75 kilograms. Alga down at 3.75 kilograms and non oilin at 5 kilograms. And so that's how the ones that were outside braving the elements fared over a month. But let's see how they compare to those that were kept indoors and those that were straight off the bed. This is the main test to see how things changed over time. I did the same strength test for all four filaments with a copy straight off the print bed so we could then see how it fared against ones on the indoor and outdoor tests. What was interesting with, with the Virgin PLA, it had broken first in the indoors test at 3.75 kilograms, but on the outdoors test had lasted to a much stronger weight of 6.75. You can see that when it was fresh off the print bed, it had lasted to 7.5 kilograms. So that early break on the indoor test was likely more as a result of a flaw inside the print itself rather than as a result of the filament. What you can see here though, is that even though both of the biodegradable filaments are slightly weaker overall than the standard PLAs, keeping them outdoors for an entire month or indoors with a weight hung off them hasn't had a significant impact on their strength overall. If you watched my previous video where I was comparing these same filaments with different tests, you'll have noticed that they were each able to hold considerably more weight than they are in this test. And that's purely because it's a different model that is distributing the weight in different ways. It's not reflective of the month that they've spent uh, out in the elements or sat in the window. And that's why I've run this benchmark here so we can compare any differences between off the bed and a month later. So that really is the main result of this test. All four of those filaments, whether they spent a month sat in a sunny window or outside braving the elements in sub-zero degrees, have fared really well. And they all look like they've just come straight off a print bed. They haven't gone uh, soft. They haven't lost their detail. Even that one millimeter thick 24 mil extrusion bridge still looks great. It looks like it's just come off the print bed. With that, you don't need to worry about a biodegradable filament giving up the ghost while you still want to use your print. It's only going to biodegrade under the right conditions for composting. So they are just as good as PLA in that respect. There are some things to take into consideration with the Alga filament. Aesthetically, it doesn't meet the standards of the other three that I've been testing. However, I think that's largely down to the print settings rather than the filament. I've already done a bit of play with the settings that were recommended by the manufacturer, but 
um, it could definitely go further. There's still some under extrusion in there. There's still some stringing. And once they've been cleaned up, I think it's going to look quite similar to a matte effect PLA, which I really like. The non-oil and filament, as long as you don't mind having a white or an off-white print, is actually going to look really good. It's a really strong, really solid filament. The best way to go, I would say, is especially if you're planning on doing a lot of test prints, which you know are probably going to end in the bin, use one of these biodegradable filaments for that because then they can just be sent off and be composted and then do your final print either in one of those biodegradable filaments or in recycled PLA. The difference between recycled PLA and virgin PLA seemed non-existent in all of these tests. In fact, some of the tests, the recycled PLA actually beat the virgin PLA. The only real reason I can see that you would go for virgin PLA over recycled is to access colors that aren't available in recycled PLA. And as time goes on, more colors are going to be available for recycled. Like I said, Filamentive, all of their PLA is already recycled and they've got a big range of colors available. So that is only going to get better. It's worth noting that if you'd like to try the recycled PLA or the Alga filament, both of them are available from Filamentive and you can currently get 15% off your entire Filamentive order using the discount code 3D Revolution. Details below. Well, I hope you guys found that interesting and you'll now consider giving recycled or biodegradable filament a try. If you've got any ideas or suggestions for other environmentally friendly filaments, please pop them in the comments below because I'd love to hear about them. If you'd like to learn more about any of the filaments I've been covering in this video, make sure you check out my earlier videos in this series. And don't forget to keep an eye out for my next video where I'm going to be looking into ways that you can use your 3D printer to help the environment in general. As usual, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks very much.